It is Main Street Today time. Got a lot of folks standing by. It's going to be a very creative show and it's going to be have some interesting things that you're going to want to be a part of. And we love to share a lot of virtual events, but this is not virtual. If you are on 65 in Nashville today, the ice and the issues and the wrecks that have already started pretty bad. So if you can stay off 65, uh, you know, and if you can stay home when it's a day like today, do that. You know, there's, there's enough problems in the world right now. If you don't just have to go out, just hang out, have some cocoa and uh, join us. We're going to start our show with someone who is part of a wonderful Nashville tradition. Tim Osgener is with us from Oz Arts, this wonderful mecca over west uh, in, in the west side of town. How are you today? Good, Devin. How are you? Just fabulous. And you are part of a wonderful Nashville tradition. How long has Oz Arts been a thing? Well, you know, we, we first start our first performance was in February of 2014. It was something that uh, uh, my family, my father and I wanted to start to bring uh, contemporary performing arts uh, and visual arts to the city and the area. We were inspired by places we went to in, uh, in Brooklyn and in Miami. And so we said, uh, why not Nashville? And wanted to bring uh, innovative, cutting edge, living younger artists to town. And they have, actually have come from all over the world. And I love the education aspect of everything you do. Everything, it's not just, you don't just put on shows. Everything has that engagement factor and getting people involved and letting people learn about the art within them. Right. I mean, well, my mother, uh, my parents were both immigrants. My mother uh, from Istanbul, Turkey, and my father Armenian from Istanbul. And my mother went to get her PhD in early childhood development at, uh, you know, at, at Peabody School. And then she worked at Tennessee State for 30 years. But she always emphasized the importance of creativity and learning because whether or not you become an artist or whether you become uh, um, you know, an accountant, being able to think outside the box and creatively is, is valued and important. And so my mother always felt that particularly as a young child, if you're able to do things like make things tangibly with your hands or be exposed to some sort of performing arts that may change the way you think or look at things, that that, right. could, have, that could have a really positive effect on, on you as a person moving forward. So we try to you know, connect the artists that we're bringing that are doing mind-blowing things with youth. Well, what you've got is a series of the art of conversation and it is viral and everybody can get a ticket to this that can fit in to the virtual space and let's talk a little bit about the art of conversation it's february 24th the next episode is february 24th coming up tell us a little bit about this yeah so this is an annual fundraiser that we have usually it's in person in our warehouse that we've converted into a uh, uh you know a flexible theater but in this case, you know, due to the pandemic, we said, why don't we have these tables be in effect uh, rooms uh, or tables of anywhere between like, you know, uh, six to 10 people that uh, are talking about different topics. A lot of them, we want to select personalities that are doing things right now that are current to the times uh, in which we live. Uh, you know, so for example, uh, you have in, in the photo over here, you know, Michael Eric Dyson on the left, who's been on, uh, uh, you know, Meet the Press and, uh, you know, and CNN recently talking about what's happening uh, with, you know, the civil unrest and, and uh, uh, what's happening in our community. Uh, also, you have, you know, T-Bone Burnett and Callie Curry there. Uh, they're hosting a virtual table. So the whole goal is to have a lot of different tables of a lot of different diversities and backgrounds, not just uh, ethnic diversity, but also like topical vocational diversity so people can can kind of like listen to different topics that this is another one that you're showing which is uh Mariba Knight and Dr. Ricky Gibbs from uh, Warner Arts Magnet uh you know of course Mariba uh has been doing the Promise podcast uh you know so we want to get together people that um are different backgrounds uh um and different kind of life experiences and different diversities and engage in civil discourse. Uh, this is one that you're showing, for example, that is around women, power, and democracy. And, uh, you know, Ms. Nelson and, and, and Ms. Ms. Beam have like, uh, have helped with kind of setting up kind of the new 
at at uh, Centennial Park, the statue that they have on, uh, um, you know, the women's kind of women's rights, the women's rights to vote, uh, the women's kind of suffragette movement uh, being displayed there. So, uh, you know, we're pretty happy with the event. The event is one that we started because somebody suggested to go ahead and and, uh, and do this style of event. And it's not your typical fundraiser. It's one that's really about you leaning in and learning something about the topic that you sign up for. It's just incredible. When I saw the names, Tim, these are heavy hitters. You would never get a chance to sit in the room with. I mean, I think about everybody who's ever wanted to be a screenwriter or get their music in TV and film. You've right. got two of the premier people that changed the musical landscape of Nashville and made Nashville land national and global landmarks out of places like the Bluebird Cafe in ways that they haven't with their con collaboration on the show Nashville. And yep. they were very instrumental in making us the It City. And I know that because you think of pre that show, it was like an hour long uh, advertising uh, tool for Nashville for six seasons. Now let's take a look at, this is my favorite picture that I found about the event. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bernie has to be in everything. Bernie in the mittens. I mean, yeah, of course. That's, that's great. <laughs> that's I my favorite. What I found. You had no idea that it was going to be uh, that viral. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I would love to have had the mitten maker herself uh, in there. But, you know, speaking about the inauguration, I want to say that we have uh, uh, also, um, that was the National Poet Laureate and, and the Tennessee Poet Laureate. We have Alora Young is uh, amazing. Uh, she, I, she was featured on CBS Sunday morning and she did kind of a poem on, on you know, the women's, oh my gosh. on the women's right to vote. And it was stunning. So, you know, she's hosting a table and, and uh, you know, uh, the person that, that Donald Trump pardoned, Robert Sherrill, who lives in the area, he, is, uh, uh, he has hosting a table. And then you have Dr. William Schaffner from Vanderbilt, who seems to be on ABC News or CNN all the time, is hosting a table. And then, you know, Wu Fei is one of my favorite local artists. And, uh, you know, she is Chinese and she has a fascinating table talking about kind of the art of Nashville and the art of, of uh, China and how that's kind of merged and, and, you know, influenced one another. So let's see how can people get tickets to this virtual event. It's February 24th. So everybody keep that in mind. February 24th, the art of conversation going virtual. So you can anywhere, you can be in your own home and watch this. You don't even have to get in a car, which I love. Yeah. And, uh, the the Oz Arts Center is an amazing place, and I encourage you to go to their Facebook page and join in the conversation there and on YouTube because there's some really neat things that you guys have on your YouTube channel. Tell people how they can get tickets for this event. Uh, yeah, all they have to do is go to ozartsnashville.org, and, uh, and then they can see it says Conversations at Oz, and the headline, like you said very beautifully, The Art of Conversation Goes Virtual. And uh, so they can click on that and uh, it says learn more and they can click on that and it takes them to the page that has all of the different uh, table hosts and uh, and what they're doing. And, uh, you know, that's how they can they can get tickets. And we've made a few different levels that uh, people can come and attend the event at. Uh, we'll also have some food delivery options and mm -hmm. uh, and wine uh, delivery options uh, probably available today or tomorrow. Yeah, there'll be a wine, uh, uh, spirits, beer, food delivery options that, that will go live on the site, probably, if not today, tomorrow, hopefully. How interesting. Oh, that's a whole different part of the virtual ticket. You yeah. know, that is that is wonderful. Thank you so much for your time, Tim. We appreciate Thanks. what you do to bring arts and the beauty of that to our neck of the woods. Thank you. Thank you, Devin, for having me. It was a pleasure, and I love the color of your glasses. You were very creative today. <laughs> Thank and the, you. The background. I'm, I need to have you next year come in with <laughs> your glasses and your and the and the red in the background around your shoulder. Thank you. See, that is my whole deal. I said, you know what? As as the need for glasses grew, I said, I'm going to have fun with it. So there you go. <laughs> Thank you. You look fabulous. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.
Tim Osgener, the Oz Center for the Arts here in Nashville. It's a beautiful place, and I hope you'll check it out, as I hope you check out my guy, Health Insurance Harvey. He kind of keeps us, you know, if you have a question about your health insurance, even if you aren't his client, even if you aren't his client, you can go to harveydurhaminsurance.com and ask him a question. Say, hey, look, it's the first of the year. We got a brand new year. Would you look at my plan and see if you can beat that? It's absolutely free. If you find yourself in need of health insurance, one Google search and a questionnaire could start your phone ringing and those emails and those texts coming from companies all over. And it can be really confusing. And sometimes you get caught up in buying something only to find that it covers very little of what you actually need. And sometimes it can be too late to do anything about it. You know, after the fact, like when you need your insurance. That's why one click to my friend, my insurance guy, Health Insurance Harvey, can keep that from happening. HarveyDurham.com. Chat with him. Set up a virtual appointment anywhere in the country, practically. He's licensed in 40 states. He'll look at your needs, your budget, and share every single thing that his insurance is going to cover and what it won't. You don't pay for what you don't need. If he can't save you money or can't give you better coverage, he won't sign you. You are under no obligation. So do yourself a favor. Get a free comparison quote from Health Insurance Harvey. It just might work for you like it did me. I'm not his commercial announcer. I'm his client at HarveyDurham.com. Well, if you're like me and you've been cooped up in your house, you might be looking around going, I think I want to change things. And the floors and the walls are where we all start. I mean, come on, let's be, let's just be honest. And when you start looking and getting confused about how to make those choices, I'm going to tell you about a place. We're going to, we're going to stay on the, the west side of town. Preston Thompson's carpet shop has been going for a really long time. And we're going to go to the guy who is the figurehead of the whole deal. Preston, how are you? Good morning. How are you today? I'm so thrilled. It, they're in Dixon, Tennessee. You have been putting floors in people's homes for how many years? Over 50 years. Well, about almost 60 years compared to the time I've been in the, in the business, but our store has been here since 1970. And, you know uh, what? That is, it's so important to go to a place that has roots in a community where you've been around and you've gotten to see and you've gotten to meet families. You're a family business. So how many people in your family have been involved in this business since it started? Everybody. <laughs> it's a family business. We, one time or another, uh, my son Phil, my daughter Mitzi would play on the floor underneath the carpet racks with their coloring books when they first started the school. And my wife was a bookkeeper and salesman. And so we started out just as a family business and we still got a family business of my son and grandson and the future great-grandson and maybe granddaughters, who knows. And uh, But we've met so many people over the years. I'm trying to retire or have <laughs> coming back in and just talking to the people. I tell them I, I could be a Walmart greeter here at the carpet shop, you know. Oh, I just love that way of doing business. It's really different. There's a little clip that I want to share with everybody. A lot of people think, oh, we'll just make it really easy. We're going to go. If you've ever tried to buy flooring from a big box store, well, here's kind of an example of a conversation amongst some women who tried that very thing. I went to every big box store in town and nobody would help me. I didn't need a new chainsaw. <laughs> I needed somebody to help me with flooring. We went with Preston Thompson's carpet shop. They did an incredible job for us. Don't they come to your house too? Yes, and they guaranteed the installation for life and guaranteed us the best price for 30 days after the sale. Well, seems like there's really no reason to shop at a big box store then. Yeah, unless you need a new toilet seat. <laughs> <laughs> I loved that. That conversation is exactly, if you try to go to a big box store, I've had people actually run and hide from me as I'm trying to get information and questions. How do you do business when, when someone calls you to come to their home? Do you go to their house? We go to the house. We take the samples. You know, it's amazing. I get my wife and I'll be sitting watching TV and we get amused at some of the commercials now. We take up the old carpet. We haul it off. We move you far. We've been doing that for over 50 years. 
it, it's a lock and key job. You know, we do it all. And, and we want you, when you come home from work, it's a beautiful floor and it's fixed and you don't have to move around. Now, we might not get the furniture back in the exact spot, but we'll get close to it. But we've had people that's been working for us for over 25 years. We've had people actually 30 years that's retired. And uh, But we do it on a personal basis. When you come in, you don't have to say, do you work in this department or who could I get to talk to? Or uh, we come out to your house, bring the samples uh, and figure the job and tell you what it's going to cost, not what maybe or could be or close. We tell you exactly what it's going to be. And we stand behind it and we give a lifetime warranty on our labor and workmanship and uh, everything is first quality. And that's what's kept us in business this long and our good friends. I wanted to ask you if someone, one of the biggest problems for flooring is if you have pets. Pets are an issue, but flooring has come a long way to provide some almost pet proof flooring. What are some things that if, if, a, if you've got someone who says, look, the dogs only let me live here. <laughs> what can I get for flooring? Well, we love indoor pets <laughs> because we sell a lot of floors to people that have indoor pets. <laughs> we had uh, one couple that would go about every two years. They had a, a an outside trap door that the dogs could come in the house and stay or go out. And they'd have us change this big den out about every two years, you know. <laughs> so... But uh, yeah, but flooring has changed completely over the years, especially with the waterproof laminate, the hardwood floors now with pre-finished. So it's got the uh, uh, wear layer on there that's like seven coats of polyurethane plus the iron oxide that keep it from scratching and so forth. So it's, but that's why I've got people like Belinda Edwards who works for us, Gail Wright. They've been in this for 25, 30 years. They know decorating colors. We care Benjamin more paint. You can match up your paint with the carpet colors or your vinyl color. And, and we're still one of the few carpet dealers that just carry a lot in stock. Uh, we'll have probably over 50 or 75 rolls of carpet, maybe 50 rolls of vinyl. And people say, vinyl, is it still selling? It's our number two seller, you know, that people put in houses still because you have so many farmhouses, rental houses, and so forth. So you don't want to overlook what is a good buy and it's a waterproof floor if it's laid in one piece you know but uh there's just so many styles and patterns and we like to invite people just come by and look you know we'll give you a free cup of coffee and sometimes they even have popcorn <laughs> i love that so you're in dixon tennessee now you 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 pointed out something that's really quick but i want to share a little message from benjamin moore because you are a benjamin moore dealer Meet the mayor of Gilman Road. He's painted most of these homes. A lot of memories. The Carters. The Freedmans. The Mordinis. Ah, the Mordinis. Good lemonade. He just did Karen's place. You missed a spot! <laughs> yep. These are his people. Available at Preston Thompson's Carpet Shop. I love that you now have the walls to match the floors. People can come in and get your, your you have your, your stylists that are right there in the store to get those colors worked with the floors. And do you have the people that you can send them to to paint those walls or do they have to paint their own walls? Well, we have people we recommend and uh, that buy from us, of course, you know, and uh, we can set you up with, just about anybody to do certain kinds of work, contracting work or whatever, because we've been in it so long, we know, and we know the good people. We know the ones that's going to do it right, because I wouldn't send you somebody that I wouldn't have in my house. See, now that's the thing right there. You wouldn't send anyone that you wouldn't have in your house. That's the way that family and friends and hometown folks do business. Now, do you just take care of the Dixon area and the West side, or how far can you go to do a job? Well, as many years we've been in business, we, we usually try to do a, like a 50 mile radius. Okay. We've done work for Phillips Builders in Nashville, Fox Ridge, Construction Associates, Opera Land Hotel, the Ryman. So we've, over the years, we've done a lot of business for a lot of people. Uh, this last year with the pandemic, 
uh, is most unusual. But our business has held up because of people staying in, remodeling, and uh, taking care of their house or staying where they're at. And our business has held up real good. So we've been very blessed, very fortunate. Well, I appreciate your time today. And thank you for letting us know that the hometown business is still alive and thriving for 50 years or more, almost 60 years. And that says everything about your business, Preston. Well, we're here and uh, we take care of our customers. And Devin, I appreciate you calling me and talking to me. This has been nice. I've enjoyed oh, it. Oh, it's so good I'd to like meet everybody you. to come in and drop by and we'll we'll go anywhere that you come to us to, to figure. So, uh, no, oh, no, thank you. No trip charge, you know. Oh, that's even better. <laughs> A visit from you guys and no trip charge. Yeah, we're going thank west. you. Tennessee River to Nashville, beyond Murfreesboro. So just give us a call. Appreciate you so much. Bye, Thanks. Preston. Bye bye. Take care. Preston Thompson's Carpet Shop. They're located in Dixon, Tennessee. We love sharing all the places that you can go around the mid state. And the locally owned and operated businesses are what make Tennessee and Middle Tennessee so very, very special. Speaking of, we're going to head to Joelton now. Um, that's west kind of in another direction. And if you have a house right now and you know the ice storms and all the bad weather affects our gutters. The biggest thing about that system, uh, about our system, and, and it's called Valor, is when we put it to the fascia mm -hmm. and we put it to the gutter and we re-bracket the gutters, it keeps the gutter in the correct position all the time. Okay, so what happens is it's kept in the correct position, but it also makes it strong, real strong. Gotcha. Um, so this gutter right here, I've got four brackets in it, and even up in here, it's just I set a two by four on top of this four foot area. Uh, actually, I have three brackets in this one, and the chains are just going right to this right here. Mm -hmm. There's no. Um, screws going into the gutter or anything like that from the back. These are just normal brackets and I always invite people to come up and look at it because a lot of guys tell me there's no way to do that. Yes, it will. Um, and I want you to watch this. You'll come right over here. Mm -hmm. Come on. There it is. And you can come over here and just, I want you to get my way here. Okay. Come around. Come All right. That's 371 pounds, right? Mm-hmm. And I'll say it's 371 because it's under the five on the end. Mm -hmm. Now, I weigh 375 pounds. How many people can go to their gutters and do this? Look at this. All the way right there on a gutter. That's unbelievable. So, and I invite people all the time to come down to the shop, step in it, come investigate it, look at it. It is legit. When you don't have to weigh yourself, home, girls. You don't have to weigh yourself. <laughs> we'll take the scale away. Um, but yeah, I invite anybody to come down. You can actually hang on your gutters once you put the Valor system in. So you know it's going to make your gutter strong. Your gutter's never going to get out of shape. And it's going to continue to keep you off the ladder and keep you out of the hospital and out of the ICU and all those things. You know, I'm a little bit older now. I don't bounce like I used to. And uh, I don't think a lot of us do. Um, but you can put this on your home. And here's the thing about it. You can actually do it for less than what these big companies charge you. So, and right now, we actually have a special on Valor, on 6-inch Valor, that if you will order Valor for your home, mm -hmm. and this is unheard of, and I know it is because I came up with it. If you will order 6-inch Valor for your home, your gutters, mm -hmm. I'm going to replace the gutter for free. Oh, wow. So you're actually going to get Valor, the best system on the market. And I urge everybody to go YouTube it and look at it. You're going to get the Valor Gutter Guard. And this part here, this part of the gutter, mm -hmm. we're going to give that to you for free. We're going to take yours down and we're going to haul it away and we're going to put this up for you. You're going to get brand new gutters and Valor Gutter Guard for the price of what you would normally pay for Valor. Wow. That is an unbelievable deal. And the number that you call is very easy. It is 615-509-4375. I love your friends at Monster. They build 
outside. They, they can enclose your patio and make it into a whole new room. I love Jameson, who we're going to talk to uh, on our next episode. He said, you know, you pay taxes on the backyard as well as the front. You might as well get some use out of it. <laughs> I thought, well, that's kind of ingenious, you know. Speaking of uh, ingenious and someone that is now in, in, in our very backyard, it's a gentleman that you're going to get to meet in our Songs of Love category. I'm going to give you a little clip. From Breck and Mind. Don't stop doing what you're doing the way you do. Oh, baby, you're so cool. Oh, baby, you know you drive me crazy. I gotta tell you lately something about you, girl. You stop my heart from beating. I'm a barely breathing. Well, I don't know, there's something about you, girl. Oh, yes, there is. Yes, there is. Breck and Mile. I know it, we're both in groove and it's so funny because I can see and we can see each other. We were just grooving in the waiting room. <laughs> How are you today? Oh, I am fantabulous. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. And, uh, you know, let's tell people a little bit about you. Now, are you a transplant to Music City or is your music just coming out of Music City? A um, little bit of both. You know, so what I do is um, I come down um, all the time. Uh, well, a lot more before this whole pandemic thing started. Um, but, you know, digital age allows us to do everything from on the road. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so just nonstop back and forth writing and um, singing and playing and getting it out there. Now, where are you from? I'm originally from a little state called Wisconsin. Oh, do you know, I've talked to so many Wisconsin folks, especially this year. And, um, okay, I got to ask you, you're from Wisconsin. What's your favorite cheese? <laughs> um, man, so it's, it's actually, it's called Belvedere. It's a Merlot-based kind of cheese. Um, phenomenal. Do but you know, my last interview with someone from Wisconsin said that very same thing. Oh, really? it be, the, see, you guys are the experts on cheese. So if anybody wants to know the best cheese in the world is from Wisconsin, it's like the place in the world. And everybody, everybody will arguably say, oh, no, 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 no. It's Vermont. It was like, no, no, it's Wisconsin. It's yeah. Wisconsin. And, and that is your home. And coming to Music City is what people do. I want to ask about uh, a charity that you got involved with there in your home state to stop bullying. Tell me a little bit about that effort that you had and you gave them a theme song to use. Yep, so um, you're referring to Generations Against Bullying. Um, they are a phenomenal group. What they do is they actually go into different like schools and host different events and kind of share different people's stories of the effects bullying has on others. Um, so I've had a great opportunity to be a part of a different um, Things that they've done, going to different schools and kind of share my story, how I was bullied as a kid um, and how my outlet was music. And so I you know, get to play some songs for the kids and you know, at the end of it, they get to come up and ask questions and so on and so forth. Um, and we wrote, actually, uh, Melissa and I and I want to say Bill DeLuigi wrote God Loves, um, which we use that for their kind of flagship song for the anti-bullying. Yeah. I, I want to ask a little bit about your own personal experience with bullying. I cannot tell you the number of people who are in music now um, from the people who are just getting into it to the people who've been in it for years. Music has been the pathway to healing from that. And it's like the best, okay, you're not going to stop me kind of a thing to go into. Tell me a little bit about yours. What was that experience like for you? Um, so my biggest bullying stuff for me, and you know, it's, it's sad because, you know, kids go through this daily, uh, daily. Even, even adults go through it now too, um, was weight issues on my end. Um, so, you know, growing up, you know, I was always an active kid, you know, grew up in the eighties and hanging out and that kind of stuff, but I always carried a little extra weight to me, a little more bull chested, a little bigger body style. Well, my Lord, you're from Wisconsin. If you don't, you freeze to Right? Yeah. You gotta, you gotta build up that bulk for you. Um, so, you know, growing up, I had, you know, people, you know, they'd start calling you, you know, fat or fatty or stuff like that. And, you know, that kind of like really as a kid, it really sticks to you like, wow, man, this is why are you call me this. And so I got to the point where, you know, I was a, a two star kind of athlete, uh, football and track. And, you know, I got into like the best shape in my life. 
And yet, even with a six pack and like muscular looking, they're also like, hey, fatty. I'm like, dudes. Like, so like, it always kind of stuck with that to me. Wow. Um, and even, you know, I've been out of high school now for, I don't even know how do we know now, but still like those like group of friends you have, they'll still be like, you know, what's up, fatty? I'm like, dude, it's not a nickname. Like, stop calling me it. <laughs> so. You know, bless you for sharing that because all we would see is the handsome young man holding that guitar and rocking it on stage, but we carry things from our past that we can, you know, we, we kind of need to deal with those things and exactly like you're doing, it's not a nickname. Don't call me that. And yep. what you're doing for these kids and to give them hope that there's a way out of that and that there's healing for that, man, thank you for doing that. It's so important. No, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. I, I thoroughly enjoy it and they're a phenomenal organization and I'll do anything I can to help them out and help the kids out too. Well, let's talk about this new single, Our Songs of Love. Every view is a vote, so we want everybody to enjoy this song, and we're going to close our show with it. Uh, before we talk about the song, tell people how they can find out more about you and your music. Um, you can find more about me at breckenmiles.com, and it is B-R-E-C-K-E-N-M-I-L-E-S, uh, a dot and then a com. No, <laughs> um, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat. Um, pretty much on all the social media stuff. You can follow me along. Um, you can get all my music on um, Spotify, Amazon, YouTube, Apple, um, anywhere you want to get it. Be like, yo, Alexa, play Breck and Miles. And they'll be like, play Breck and Miles. And there I am. So that's kind of exciting. It is. Okay. When I heard it. I was like, we, we don't have Alexa, we have Google. So I was like, hey, Google, play Breck. And it's like, song by Breck and Miles. I'm like, whoa, that's cool. Dude, <laughs> it's a freak out, isn't it? That's the coolest thing ever. Well, I know that there are going to be people asking their personal uh, assistants, their electric, electronic assistants to play Breck and Miles, especially after they hear this song. Let's talk about Megan as we go out. Absolutely. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll give you the, the, the nutshell long version of it. <laughs> so Megan came about, um, literally the pandemic saved my marriage. Um, we were you know, being a musician, playing all these years on the road, 170 some shows a year. We have a two-year-old daughter named Remy now. I was I was constantly gone, gone on the weekends, and you know, it's, it's a rough, rough kind of life to live like that. Um, got to the point where Meg and I were no longer kind of seeing eye to eye with things, and we just kind of like, hey, we need a, we need a break. And so I was actually out of the house for about a month. Pandemic hit, and you know, we were splitting time with our daughter. And I said, well, I want to see her. And she goes, well, the only way you're going to see her is if you come home. And I said, great. I didn't want to leave the first place. So um, came back home and it was the exact thing we needed because it allowed us to reconnect, refigure out why we fell in love with each other to begin with. And then we actually, during our second month, when our governor said, hey, stay home, we said, no, I don't think so. Uh, we decided to bolt down to Florida by where Melissa and uh, her husband, Sean, were staying. And that's where the song Megan was born right then and there. So. You're not the first person to tell me that they got a blessing from the pandemic. And there are a lot of people who rekindled love in that time because you really do figure out, it boils it down to what is really important. Mm -hmm. And we're going to share this. Our month of love, our songs um, are all different kinds of love and the different faces of love. And it's not always, you know, roses and chocolate. Sometimes there's, when you get down to the, okay, we're going to stick this out. This is going to be important. That's the real love. And yeah. that's, that's literally, you know, and now that people kind of hear the story too, they, they get a, a kind of new understanding and, and deeper connection to the song itself, because, you know, we wrote this song, but I'm not the first person in the world to go through this kind of thing. Um, and so, you know, it's very relatable. Obviously, it's personal for me. Uh, the song is titled Megan, which is literally my wife's name, Megan. Um, if you see the little the cover and stuff, it's a picture of Megan and our daughter Remy holding each other. Um, but yeah, it was exactly it was a it was a blessing and it you know, came at the right time. Thank you, Brecken, for being so open and so real in this, because there are a lot of people who they, they want their social media cover shot to be their whole life and thank you for sharing that because people who see someone who's out there on the road and singing they realize oh they have they just have the everyday normal stuff just like we do 
Oh yeah. And, you know, just, we show it to everybody. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, thank you so much for your time today. No, thank you for having me on here and I appreciate it. And um, congratulations again on the new platform. This is awesome. <laughs> thank you. You know what? You know, just, we're just here making lemonade. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, dear. Lemonade. Yeah. <laughs> here is Breck and Miles. And remember, every view is a vote. Every share is a vote. I'll just start with my heart It's where it all began The day I laid my eyes on you I found my best friend and Now here we are You've got a one hand on the door I was the guy who made you smile Now you can't take no more Like a tie Stronger than a hurricane My love for you is just as true as it was the first day Sometimes it feels like chasing the wind Trying to hold on to you, Megan Second chance Like a tidal wave Stronger than a hurricane My love for you Is just as true As it was the first day But sometimes It feels like chasing the wind I'm Trying to hold on to you What a beautiful song. Brecken, thank you so much for that. Hey, you got people weighing in on social media. Tamara says, love me some Brecken. Oh, awesome. <laughs> well, we are so glad that you guys all joined us. And we're going to say goodbye the way we always do. To remember to be safe and be kind. No bullying. <laughs> And remember that 